in the dangerous arena of combat operations. What you can't see can kill you. What's he got in his hand? That was a weapon in his hand. Roger, I think it's a weapon. In war, the battlefield is a dangerous place. And it becomes even deadlier for what you can't see. On the gun. Roger, got the gun. Coming down. Not seeing the enemy concealed under camouflage or not spotting a deadly gas can get soldiers killed. The Army Research Laboratory is working on improving current technology to give U.S. warfighters supervision. To see how this supervision would work, we need to start with infrared light. Infrared light, or IR, is invisible to the naked eye. Now, every object emits IR light, you just can't see it. The hotter an object, the more IR it emits. And what makes IR unique is that it can pass through smoke, fog, and haze. To detect IR light, you need a special camera. Most of them work like this. A special lens focuses the IR light onto a detector inside the camera. The detector material absorbs the light and converts it into electrical impulses. These impulses are then sent to a signal processor that translates them into video, and then that video appears on a screen. On the battlefield, smoke screens are used to conceal movement. Now, IR light can pass through regular smoke and fog, but there are military-grade devices out there specifically made to block IR light. To counter against these devices, ARL scientists are making current military-grade IR cameras even more powerful, powerful enough to cut through IR-blocking smoke agents. At the heart of each camera is the detector material. The more sensitive the material, the better the IR camera. Current detector materials can only absorb about 5% of IR light. Because of this low absorption rate, more time is needed to register a clear image. At the Army Research Laboratory, Dr. K.K. Choi took a standard detector material and reconfigured its structure. By using angled sidewalls, he was able to increase the detector's efficiency from 5 to 20 percent, allowing more light to be absorbed. But 20 percent wasn't good enough. For the uh, consumers, the commercial product, 20 percent is good enough. That's what, but you, you don't want anybody to be better than you, detect faster than you, further away from you. You want to be the, the best. Unsatisfied, Dr. Choi spent countless hours devising a theoretical model to help him accurately predict performance and that model would become the driving force behind the project. In the past 25 years, in the life of this technology, actually nobody can predict what will happen. People just trial and error, based on trial and error basis. You, you see a phenomenon, you want to predict it, you want to explain it. That's the innate nature of a scientist. But with this modeling, now we can design something, you, you can draw a blueprint, you can make the material, you can produce what you exactly want to make. Dr. Choi's theoretical modeling tool was a scientific breakthrough. It allowed him to modify detectors for increased sensitivity with predictable results. Using this modeling tool, he was able to reach an efficiency of 70%. It was the high point of his career. When I first observed the detector efficiency, that is so uh, many times higher than uh, what I ever seen. I become so emotional that I come into tears because this is really the goal of my 25 years, and it's so useful uh, for for the army. So I think it's really, really uh, a big satisfaction uh, in in my career. NASA Goddard Space Flight Center created a working camera using his predictions, and they were able to confirm a 30% efficiency rating. Now, other industry partners are working on cameras with predicted efficiencies of up to 70%. With time and continued work, ARL will give the U.S. military a range of these supervision devices. Helicopter pilots would be able to fly in zero visibility. Soldiers could spot and avoid poisonous gases from a distance. Ground forces could use it for marking targets, who to shoot who not to shoot and where not to go. And that could prevent the tragic fratricides that occur during the fog of war.